It's Mark Yegi here, Wealth Architect and Lifestyle Investor. Let's take your life to the next level. Welcome to the Wealth Architect Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Wealth Architect Podcast. So glad you're here. Today, we have um, a pretty cool guy. He comes to us from all the way around the world, If you, at least you're over, if you're over here in North America like I am. Uh, he's a full-time trader based in Australia, and he's also the founder and trading coach at Enlightened Stock Trading, which focuses on educating supporting traders on their journey to profitable systems trading. I mean, if you listen to my show, you know that we're probably on the same page. So please, let's welcome Adrian Reed. Adrian, good morning wow. in your case. Yeah, absolutely. How are you? Thanks so much for having me on the show. Doing great. So glad you're here. Hey, listen, tell us a little bit about how you got started in the market. So uh, and just before, just so we could set the stage, you believe in trading crypto and you have systems that you use for stock trading and other things as well, right? Yes, absolutely. So I, I, I trade systematically across multiple stock markets, Australia, Hong Kong, US. I've traded other markets as well. Um, and I also trade systematically in crypto across a wide wide range of tokens. So, so um, how, did you, how did you get your start and how did you get into all that? Yeah, look, uh, look the, my first exposure to the markets and the things that the thing that really got me excited about it was a, um, a board game called the stock market game that we found uh, while we were on holidays when I was about eight years old. The and, nineteen, uh, the one in the 1950s, right? Yeah. I have yeah. that well, game. Well, it wasn't in the 50s, but it wasn't quite that long ago, but that's the game, right? <laughs> right. And, I have um, that game. Yeah. 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 So good. And uh, we we played that as a family, at least at least my brother and my father and I, and, uh, you know, became paper billionaires. And that was amazing. And it's like, oh, this is so fascinating. You know, it goes up and it goes down and you buy low and you sell high and you get rich. And um, and that was great. And so I, I had a first kind of positive exposure to it just through a game, right? But it didn't really come um, become practical until I started uh, started in the workforce after university. And it didn't take me long um, working uh, in a corporate job to realize that I didn't want to do that forever. <laughs> and so <laughs> I don't know, it must have been a couple of months in, I said to my dad, hey, um, how do I invest so I can retire? <laughs> And, uh, and he question. laughed at me because I, I only just started in the corporate world and um, he told me what he knew and I, you know, that started the journey, but uh, it was a long and windy path after that for me to find my uh, approach that would really work for me. Um, I, I tried a bunch of different strategies over three or four years and finally you know, found systematic trading, got profitable, and then it was just a matter of building capital until, uh, until I could be free. Nice. So, I mean, you've, you've said the word systematic trading, and uh, why don't you break that down a little bit for us? What does that mean, systematic trading? It sounds yeah. fancy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, it's systematic trading, algo trading, um, strategy trading, bot trading, all very similar. For me, systematic trading is just uh, a method of trading where you have a strategy that is defined by absolute rules. If this and this and this happen, you buy. If this or this happens, you sell. And how much you buy is uh, how much you risk overall. All of those things are defined by rules. And the reason that's so great is that when you have absolute rules that define your trading decisions, and you know this, but uh, you, um, you eliminate the subjectivity and it becomes testable. So I can say, all right, here are my rules. Let's apply them to the stock market on all stocks since 1950 and see what happened. Or let's apply them to the crypto market since inception and see if they would have made profit or not. And you can actually tell uh, whether a strategy has been profitable in the past. Now, that doesn't guarantee it's going to be profitable in the future, obviously. But if a strategy has not been profitable in the past, pretty much a guarantee it's not going to be profitable in the future. So there's different ways to test it to make sure you've got a better chance of being profitable in the future in real-time trading. That's a whole um, you know, long conversation about how to test properly. But really, systematic trading is about eliminating discretion, having rules that are tested so that you know whether they're profitable or not, so that you can confidently apply them day after day. Yep. And the great thing about that is it eliminates all the emotion. It shrinks the time because most of us are really busy. And um, before I went systematic, I was spending four or five hours a night trying to find my trades and still not making good money. And when I went systematic, 
that shrunk immediately to just 30 minutes a day because it's all data-based and the trades are found by the computer. Nice. And does do you take into account what the market is doing? Is there a market timing component of it? Yeah, it depends on, depends on the strategy in the market. So um, I trade a whole range of systems, let's say you know, maybe a dozen systems in stocks all up and uh, 10 systems in crypto all up, give or take. Uh, they're not all active at the same time because there's some strategies for strong bull markets. There's so, some strategies for weaker positive markets and there's some bear market strategies. So they'll turn on and off uh, depending on what the market is doing. And then there's some strategies that just run constantly all the time and just pick out uh, very particular trades here and there when they emerge. So both can work, but yeah. generally no one strategy works well in all market conditions all of the time. I spent a couple of years uh, when I was first starting out trading my own money, doing some things. I mean, I had a financial trading technology firm. We wrote algorithms to do systematic trading. And then when I went out on my own, I started to write my own algorithms. And I thought, well, I'll just do if this, then that, and this, and that. And I'll just write those into the to the easy language it was called. And I, I had all those things going. And I'm like, look at all the money I would be making if I just did this because I was doing backtesting. And every single time I turned it from backtesting to live, I lost money every single time. Right. And I was like, this doesn't work. Like if it works so well when you're backtesting it, why doesn't it work <laughs> in the real life? It's just like, it's like, there's no way you can do this. So there's no way I could do it. I just didn't have the chops to either write the code or I wasn't timing the market right, or I wasn't choosing the right conditions or whatever, but it didn't work for me. And so that's why I came up with a system that uses, uh, that uses other people's desire for risk to write calls against what I do. And, right. um, and then we, we create income from that. So that's my system, but uh, certainly there's breakout systems. I have an incredible breakout system that works as well, but I can't do it with a computer making my decisions. I haven't been able to cross that chasm yet. Yeah. It's actually what, I mean, what you described is, is, a pretty common experience for people doing uh, approaching trading the way I approach it. And you found your method and your strategy that works and, yeah. and yeah. systemize it and so on. So it's essentially, we're probably doing the same thing, different rules, but the same style and same thinking. Right. But the problem with um, uh, cracking open the back tester and saying this and this and this, and also this, but not that. And this, you're basically curve fitting to that, those historical conditions that you're back testing on. That's and true. so the more logic you put into the system to try and narrow down the trades, the more fragile the system becomes. Yeah. And we want robust systems that work uh, like a sledgehammer, not really precise systems that work like a scalpel, as at least the language that I use. And so I use fairly blunt rules. Um, and those blunt rules work over a wide range of parameter values, a wide range of conditions, so they're more likely to work in the future. But yeah. I found as well, the more you filter and the more you kind of try and eliminate losing trades and really narrow it down, the less it works in real-time trading because it's it's too it's too curve fit. Yeah, and, and I absolutely feel you on the rules thing because you know today we're having a particularly big meltdown, and we have been for basically a week, at least in the stocks uh, that I'm in. Uh, and I have strayed from my rules a bit and I'm feeling the emotion, right? And that's the whole point of having rules is to, is to make sure that you don't stray from your rules because the rules are there to protect you. And when you do stray from them, you, you feel the emotion. So I have to do the reset and get back into the game and go back to my trading plan and put that system in because that's what is there to protect you. Because you think about these trading plans, not during the market when things are tanking and you're emotional. You think about them on a Sunday afternoon when you're sitting down and being logical, and that's the time to make your trade because then you're using your brains, not your emotions to make the- Yeah, exactly right. right. This is a, it's, a, it's a vicious feedback uh, loop that um, we have, as traders, we have to be really careful not to, not to fall, in, uh, fall into because we, if, if we deviate from our rules- then the emotion comes up because there's more there's more fear or there's more greed or whatever. And when the emotion comes up, our intelligence drops. So we're more likely to deviate from our rules even more, which then causes more emotion, more stress. So therefore the intelligence drops even more. And so we you just cascade into very bad decisions. Yeah. Yeah. And I um, remember once I was going through a particularly rough bear market and I thought I could day trade my way out of it. And I said, oh. you know what? abandon everything, just you know, start buying options. And I started, buying <laughs> options and, and I was so distraught by the end of the day. I think I lost like 300 grand that day. And oh, it no. just goes to show you that 
you know, it, it, even even when you think you know everything and you think you've got you you can you say it can't go any lower and you buy, or you say well it's going to continue to go low so you short and you're usually exactly wrong. So the, I certainly proved proved it to myself that day that I I took a mistake and I made it worse by being emotional and not following a trading plan. So you're absolutely right. I'm so glad that I have somebody on the other side of the world that talks about trading systems and, and rules as much as I really believe in them. It's uh, just hilarious how, uh, not, not that situation, but humanity, Yeah, you know, humans just don't make very good traders naturally, yeah. right? Our, our emotions just, you know, play, play havoc with financial decisions. And so putting those rules in place is, crit- is critical. If we yeah. don't have rules to follow, the emotions drive the decisions. And in finance, that's just deathly, deadly. Yeah. Um, trouble is we've got to have the confidence to follow the rules. That's it. That's it. And so how do we do that? Well, I mean, that's, a again, a whole big conversation, but that's a lot for me. That's a lot about the backtesting rigor to really dig into how do those rules perform and, and all of those things. Um, but there's one thing which is interesting that you said, which I wanted to pick up on if I, if you don't mind. Yeah, let's do it. Um, I, uh, I've, I've also thought in the past, oh, I could trade my way out of this or this is a better decision um, and lost money, not 300 grand, but um, that's uh, that would have hurt. Um, but um, yeah, what, uh, what I started to do was every time I thought I had a clever idea about how to fix something or change something or make it better, I would convert that idea to a rule and then test it and um, back test it over as much data as I could get. And what I inevitably found is probably 98, 99% of the time, my trading ideas were terrible. Mm. They just, because they come from a human brain and from our social conditioning, which is not good for trading, right? Right. So I would test these ideas. It's like, oh, that loses money. It's like, oh, that loses money. Test another one. Oh, that loses money. And after doing this hundreds and hundreds of times, I started to realize that any clever idea I had about the markets was probably not that clever. And that then conditioned me to just follow the rules. Yeah. So it took a, it takes a lot of stress out of the trading when you just give up on your, you know, you say, submit to the rules, yeah. you know, surrender to them and just follow them because most of our clever ideas are not that clever. They're not. The, as long as you have that relative conviction, then it's easier to follow the rules, right? Yeah. You have an experience like I had. I'm sure you've had some experiences. They make it easier to follow the rules but we're still human. We still stray, <laughs> right? right? And we still make mistakes. I think I see in the background, it's a little fuzzy. Trade your system, not your emotions. Is that what it that's says? Correct. Yeah, yeah it's absolutely a little fuzzy. right. But it's, it's a beautiful sign because uh, that's exactly what we're talking about. So, um, all right. So you've got rules and the rules are there to, you know, be back testable and to see if they're uh, subjective, right? You make them subjective and that will help you eliminate your emotion and also free up, so freeze up a little bit of your time. So that's the summary of the beginning of our conversation. Why don't we jump in and listen, this is not financial advice. This is entertainment, if nothing else, maybe some information, but go see your financial professional, all that stuff. But um, without getting any specifics about any stocks or cryptos, give us an example of maybe a, a couple of rules that we, you know, so we can understand kind of what's in your head and how you go about creating a rule and maybe which ones that you might use. Hey, it's Mark Yeggy here to tell you about our cash flow machine trading program that's designed to teach you how to make safe, reliable income. Now we shoot for two to 4% a month of income and growth in your portfolio. And we have courses to teach you how to do this yourself or inside a mastermind community. And the best part of that is it only takes about 20 minutes a week to implement. Now, while two to 4% a month doesn't sound like much, I show you exactly how we took my IRA from $111,000 to over 500,000 in just 19 months without huge risk. I'm not telling you this to brag, just to show you that you can do this too. So to learn more about this program, go to cashflowmachine.io. That's cashflowmachine.io and you can learn more. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So yeah, look again, um, really important to uh, as a trader, for anyone listening, you know, when you hear rules or ideas or strategies from someone else, you've got to be able to test them for yourself because yes, I can't yes. tell you how many trading books I've read and I've taken strategies directly out of the book published by well-known people and tested them and they don't work. Right. I've done the same. 
Yeah, so really important to test things for yourself. But having said all that, here's a good example. So um, US stock market is not tr is not trading so hot right now. We're, we're in a bit of a bear market. Um, so it's nice to make money on the way down. So a lot of people don't, a lot of people will buy and hold and make money on the way up, but not but far fewer people will short sell. Yes. And, you know, in 30 words or less, short selling means borrowing a stock from the broker, selling it at a high price on the market. When it drops, buying it back at a lower price and giving it back to the broker. And you made money on the way down because you, you sold high and you bought low instead of buying low and selling high. So that's short selling in a nutshell. Now, if you want to make money shorting stocks, um, one way to uh, one strategy that that um, works fairly well for me or works very well for me is you wait till the market is clearly going down so that the whole market has to be going down. And this is all about momentum and weight, the weight of the market, the weight of the investors um, kind of outlook. Right. So the market has to be weak when the when the market is in like the S&P 500 rallies and then rolls over again. That's usually a pretty good time to short weak stocks. So stocks that are already in a downtrend, when the market rolls over in a downtrend, you can get short. And when you're short selling, the risks are pretty high because the best you can do is you can short sell at whatever price the stock is, let's say 100. The best you can do is it can go to zero. The worst you can do is it can go to infinity, 200, 300, 500, 1,000. Yeah. Now, realistically, stocks don't go from 100 to 1,000 overnight. So that unlimited risk is a bit of a fallacy if you're sensible. If you're trading penny stocks, you know, you can get yourself into trouble. But if you're trading large caps, that's it's usually okay. So, but because of that risk, I don't just short one or two names. I will have 30 stocks that I short all in small positions because if one of them goes wrong, I, I don't want it to hurt me. So I'll take 30, 30 weak stocks that are already trending down. When the market is down, rallies and rolls over, I'll get short a range of stocks. And then the momentum is down. I put a profit target in a little way down. How far down the profit target should be depends a bit on you know, your preferences, but somewhere in the vicinity of 15 to 50% uh, can work, right? You've got to test these for yourself. And then it tends to continue to decline. A lot of the stocks will hit the profit target within a couple of weeks. And if they don't and they start rallying again, you just get out. So as an example strategy, that's kind of the framework for a short side system that I use. Uh, it works really well in bear markets and it keeps you out of the bull markets. So when the markets are strong, you're trend following or buying and holding. When the markets are weak, this kicks in and you make some money on the way down. Does that yeah. kind of yeah. give you a yeah, good that's, example? I mean, that's a perfect example. So let me let me dive into that a little bit. Uh, well, let's say the stock is at 100, it's uh, it's rallied to 105, and it's starting to roll over again, and now it's back to 100, and you short it, right, based mm -hmm. on your strategy. And now it goes to 95. Mm -hmm. Do you have um, a trailing stop on it, do you, or do you give it room to go all the way back up to 100, or do you have a trailing stop that kind of follows it all the way down? How does that work where you guarantee that you're not round-tripping yourself and basically losing money on something that you had a nice profit in? How does that work? Yeah, look, that's the perpetual trader's problem, isn't it? Because when we <laughs> when we have a bit of profit in a stock, we don't want to lose it, or in a trade, we don't want to lose it and give it up. Yeah. Um, I in this particular strategy, I don't use a trailing stop, but I do have an a, an exit which will protect some of the profits. Because what happens? So I, I have a stop loss because I don't want to lose too much. So I, I, let's say I got in a hundred, I might I'll have a stop loss a little way up, maybe 120, 130, something like that, a little way up, a long way up. That's and um, that's like a fail safe. Okay. If the, if the stock falls, I have a, um, a momentum sort of indicator that says, if it turns up, back up, get out. So it's not a traditional trailing stop where like it's a 10% trailing stop. If the stock rallies 10% from any point, right. Then, then I get out. I haven't found those to work terribly well on the short side. Uh, they work very well on the long side, I think better. So I use a sort of a momentum indicator to get me out if it if the stock starts to rally. And if the market starts to rally, I'll also get out. Yeah. So so both of those. So it's a little bit, I guess the answer is sort of yes, but not exactly yes. 
Are we wonky enough for you, everybody? Um, because we're we're del- we're diving into some some trading talk here. Hopefully, you're able to follow. If not, I find trading fascinating, and maybe this is a field that you can learn a bit about. But you won't know anything about trading until you put your money in it. That's when you learn. You won't learn it paper trading. You won't learn it back testing. With all due respect, you will only learn it when you actually put your dough behind the trade and your and your convictions. And then you create, like Adrian says so well, you create new rules around what you will do and what you won't do next time. So that's pretty. That's a pretty good example, right? So we're talking on the short side. You got a little bit of knowledge about how you make money in this crazy bear market, which I've been saying for a year that we're in a bear market. I think we're getting close to the end because it feels so scary right now. I think I think like we're closer to the end than we are at the beginning, even though there's all this news and interest rate hikes and all this kind of stuff. But let's turn a bit to crypto if we can, because I know you do the same thing. We talk about stocks and I'm a stock market guy, but I also have a hedge fund that handles primarily Bitcoin. And, you know, in the last few days, we've had some tumultuous times in the business as one of the exchanges has gone insolvent. Uh, There's runs on it and um, and there's a little bit of uh, well, there's there's some problems with it. Let's just leave it at that. And so the, the Bitcoin market yesterday and depending on when this goes out, but yesterday went up in US dollars, 2000 went down 3000 and didn't settle at the middle. It kind of stayed down. And today it's at even a lower level. So, uh, you know, Bitcoin is a volatile business. Some of the other cryptocurrencies that are, are centralized are even more volatile. How do you how do you trade cryptocurrency in that market where a lot we've had a lot of failures this year? We've had you know the failure in FTX, which I just mentioned. We've had failures in Luna. We've had failures, I think, in Celsius. And there's you know the list twenty thousand tokens, everybody. So you know when you're talking about all these different projects, they're all not going to succeed. How do you separate the wheat from the chaff, Adrian, in the crypto space? It's a, it's a really great question and really, really important, particularly in crypto. Um, when, when I'm talking, for my own trading and when I'm working with, with students on crypto, the biggest thing is diversification. Um, and I know that that sounds easy to say, right? But what do I mean? You know, you don't want to have just one exchange because if you've got just one exchange and it goes under, you're in trouble. You don't want to have a small number of tokens because there's a lot of... Uh, let's say murky kind of gray economics going on, uh, a lot of leverage behind the scenes, things that we're not going to understand from the outside. Um, So I don't have any high conviction type trades in crypto. I have mass diversification. So I've got um, dozens and dozens and dozens of positions in crypto. I trade eight different systems, no, 10 different systems rather. And uh, each of those systems holds a large number of trades. So if any one goes bad, I literally wouldn't even bat an eyelid if it went to zero because my positions are really quite small relative to the account size. I think that's important because there's a lot we don't know. But the second thing is I really strongly don't believe in buy and hold in this space (laughs) because we don't know who the winners are going to be. And people will say, oh, yeah, but if you just buy Bitcoin, if you just buy Ethereum, if you just buy the top five, then you'll be okay. Just buy and hold them forever. It's like, but hang on a minute. Five years ago, the top five was very different than the top five now. And even two years ago, it was probably quite different. So in five years time, we have no idea what the top five is going to be. And we have no idea which technologies are going to win, whether something better is going to come in, you know, faster network, lower costs, high liquidity, tighter spreads, more utility, blah, blah, blah. So I don't buy and hold anything. There's always a fail-safe exit. And my, my strategies in crypto are designed in a way that I call fail-safe. Think about a, I'm an engineer, think about a, an oil refinery. You know, if the power goes off in an oil refinery and there's valves left open and oil spewing out and the, you know, the furnaces are still on and all of that, the oil refinery is in a lot of trouble. But if the power goes off in an oil refinery, those things don't happen because they have valves which are fail safe. Water valves fail open. Oil valves fail closed. Wow. Right? So it's fail safe. If something goes wrong, things don't explode. And in your trading systems, especially in crypto, they've got to be fail safe. So you've got to have a stop loss. You've got to have an exit that will get you out if the trade is going against you. You've also got to have an entry that will get you in, in the case of the monster move. 
You don't want to have the really precisely defined super duper strategy with the 15 candlesticks and the ultra um, precisely defined support and resistance levels, blah, 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 because you're going to miss the monster move. You want to have something blunt that absolutely will get you into the big move. And if you if your the move doesn't play out, you want to have something that will absolutely get you out if you're wrong. Why and not so, just buy 30 of them all at once and forget about trying to put, you know, to fail, not fail safes, but triggers to, to get you in when something's making a monster move because you might miss it. It might jump over your spot and you you, you won't get in. I, I yeah. So 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 the fail safe entry to make sure you get into the monster yeah. move is something blunt that will always trigger like okay. a market order. To, as a, 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 mar a, a breakout where you yep. enter on a market order. Okay. You know, you definitely get in. You know, you Got can't it. not get in. Got it. And on the short side, the same thing. You know, you don't want to miss the monster down move. You've got, you've got to get in yeah. on the short yeah. side. So um, you can have some other strategies that are a bit more tightly defined, but you want to have a core strategy that will get you into the big trends, keep you in them, and then get you out with profit. So question for you is... Um... Are, are you, you're trading these, right? You're not yeah. staking and making interest oh, on no, it. No, no. none of that stuff where you tie up your cryptocurrency for a while. You're actually liquid and you're trading and you can be in and out of any position based on your own whim. And this, by the way, everybody is a 24 seven market. So, yes. you know, in the middle of the night, if something's going on, you can get out if you want to versus the stock I, market. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I could theoretically, I could theoretically, my strategies are on daily or weekly charts. Okay. So once a day, I'll make a trading decision or my computer will make a trading decision. Because in fact, my crypto trading is 100% automated. Uh, all of the principles that we've talked about apply, but my computer does it for me. So um, once a day, the data updates, I see what happened in the last 24 hours, the systems run, I get new buy and sell signals. My computer talks to the exchange through the API, places the trades and it's done. Um, the stop losses for my strategies that have stop losses are in the market. Um, some stop losses are next bar on open. So if it touches a certain level during the day, when the new daily bar starts, I'll get out. But, you know, that's just nuance and strategy design. Yeah. And, and do you write this software to yourself? Do you use a, an assisted writing program? How do you, how does that work for you? The, the rules are mine. I use off the shelf software. Actually, one of the traps for for systematic trading, I feel, is people, many who are naturally drawn to it are programmers. It's like, oh yeah, I can program my own backtesting engine. It's like, hang on a minute, you're going to spend weeks or months yeah. programming a backtesting engine. <laughs> when someone's already done it, you can buy it off the shelf for 300 bucks and you could spend weeks or months on a strategy that you put into the backtesting engine. Right, yeah, that's far more useful. So yeah, I don't program my own software. I, um, I use off the shelf. And if there's any complex coding, I use it, I use it, I outsource it. That's fascinating. Well, that sounds really cool. It sounds like you have a lot of, uh, a lot of fun stuff going on. You, you uh, are pretty much a left brain guy, engineering background, <laughs> you totally. like checklists and systems and processes and procedures. And I love all that. I think that's great. So um, how can people learn more about what you do, get involved with you? You know, tell us a little bit, a bit, a bit about that. How about, a, yeah, how about time for a 30 second commercial, a minute commercial or something like that? For what sure, real quick. Um, yeah. if, if you want to learn about systematic trading, first place to go is enlightenedstocktrading.com. Um, that's my website. I've got a couple of hundred blog posts on there talking about systematic trading and mindset and all of those things, uh, crypto and stocks. So um, go there, have a read. Um, I've also put together a set of materials, a free course and uh, some, uh, some articles that cover some of the biggest mistakes and uh, some of the biggest levers of success for crypto trading, which um, I thought would be most useful at this point in time. Um, and you can get that at enlightenedstocktrading.com forward slash wealth architect. And uh, that's, uh, if you go there, then you, know, you can email me, you'll get some emails from me and ask whatever questions you need. Cool. So that's a free resources they can get by going to enlightenedstocktrader.com forward slash wealth architect, right? Yeah, enlightenedstocktrading.com. Stock trading. Stock trading. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, stock, enlightened stock trading. Well, now we got to say it a few times. So <laughs> hopefully it's burning into those drivers who are driving down the street and don't have a pen and a paper piece of paper to write it down. Uh, well, cool. What um, what final thoughts can you leave us, uh, you know, about, uh, about anything in the markets, trading, making money, investing? Uh, I'm sure you yeah. have a couple of tips that you can you can wrap this up with. 
Yeah, I do. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, look, the, the markets are in a really crazy state right now. Stocks are in a bear market. Crypto is in a bear market. Um, emotions are high. People are losing money. Um, the biggest driver of long-term, biggest drivers of long-term success are having rules that will keep you safe. Positive rules that have a positive expectation of profit, um, and having confidence in those rules, and trading them with low risk and low leverage. A lot, too many traders try and get rich quickly by using leverage because they think they're on a sure thing. But in the markets right now, there are no sure things, and so. Um, I trade very conservatively. If you want to win the game, you've got to stay in the game. So don't use a lot of leverage. Don't risk a lot on each trade. 1% per trade risk is the maximum that people should be risking if they're trading actively. And follow your rules. And if you don't know how to follow your rules or you don't have confidence in those rules, reach out to me and I'll show you how to you know, build that confidence so you can and keep yourself safe. Good stuff, Adrian. I love it. Risk management, everybody. Really critical thing. Mindset. Another critical thing to trading. And these are two things that most people don't talk about. They're like, what stock should I buy? What crypto should I buy? I, you know, I want to double my money. I want to buy options. I want to do all these risky things. And Adrian is telling you about a couple of ways that you can mitigate the risk. And like he says, if you want to win the game, you got to stay in the game. So I want to thank you, Adrian, for your, for your time, your wisdom, and being on our show today. I think you dropped some really cool bombs for us. Uh, I love some of the knowledge that you've uh, you've you've thrown our way. So thank you so much for being here. And uh, it was nice to have you. Pleasure, Mike. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Yeah. And, uh, and to all of you who are listeners and watchers and viewers, I thank you so much for being here. And I'll see you next time on another edition of the Wealth Architect Podcast. Remember what I always say, never give up your power and your health, your wealth, or your time. Have a great day, everybody. You've been listening to the Wealth Architect Podcast with Mark Yegi. Follow us on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Like and subscribe on YouTube. Share and tell your friends. See you soon.